No, it's very good. Look, if a 56-year-old like me can run on the field, no pain, it's got to be good. Very, very impressive. How important is it that the grassroots game has has facilities like this? Oh, it's, it's enormously important. You know, the, the, the rugby game in England is based on the clubs. The clubs produce the players and, and to have pitches like this just encourages the kids to practice more, to be more skillful and therefore enjoy the game. And is it good? I think it's enormously important. You know, it shows the RFU cares. I think by putting 100 pitches in, I believe this is the third pitch to be opened. It, it just shows how committed they are to the, to the grassroots of the game. From a rugby well, I think it's more practical. I think, you know, everyone would love to have beautiful grass pitches that you can play on all the time, but the reality is you can't do that, particularly in England where the, there's a lot of rain. So to have more practical pitches like this is essential for the development of the game. I suspect you didn't have services like this when you were a youngster. No, no, we used to run around on, on concrete and, uh, you know, it was pretty basic. So kids today are, are so lucky to have these pitches. Well, we've always got injuries, you know, that's part and parcel of the game. For us, we see it as an opportunity to continue to develop the depth of the squad. And to win the World Cup, you need 31 test-class players, and that means you've got players who have played at the highest level, have proven themselves under pressure. So these injuries gives, gives us an opportunity to develop more talent. How frustrating is it for you? Uh, it's not frustrating at all. You know, I, I really mean it's an opportunity to create depth. You know, we've got Mako and, and Joe both probably not going to play most of the Six Nations, so it's a great chance for, for guys like Mullen, guys like potentially Genge, guys like Nathan Catt to put their hand up and see how good they are. Well, Ireland have just beaten the All Blacks in, uh, in the autumn and have done exceedingly well. Scotland are improving. France should have beaten the All Blacks and should have beaten Australia. So there's great competition within, within the Six Nations. We're expecting a very tough and competitive uh, tournament. All we're worried about is beating France in the first game. You know, our focus is, is game by game, and if we do that, then the record may come. Some people seem really confident, so much so that they've produced a T-shirt already commemorating an England win in the Six Nations. Have you ever heard of that confidence before a tournament? I've never heard of that before, and it doesn't really concern us. You know, People try to point it out as, as the team being arrogant, but it's got nothing to do with us. We're just worrying about them preparing well. Nobody sent you a t-shirt then yet? No, I haven't seen one yet. <laughs> Eddie, just in terms of the players' um, fitness, um, obviously Dylan Hartley's had his suspension, that's been a bit of time out. How is his fitness coming along and how has he been able to sort of keep it up, do you know? Well, I've never seen him in better physical condition. He's training very hard. He's going to have a game-like uh, training session tomorrow, I believe, uh, and we'll see how fit he is. But we're anticipating that he's going to be right and ready to go for the Six Nations. <laughs> Just in terms of the team's mindset, now obviously you are defending champions and still going to win it, same as last time. Does that sort of change things in terms of the mindset going into it? Well, the only thing it changes is the expectation around the team. You know, this time last year, no one was expecting the team to do well. Now, everyone expects the team to do well. But it really doesn't change what we do. You know, all we do is prepare well, make sure we're physically and mentally right and ready to go. And is it possible to say who you see as your biggest rivals this, this time round, given the shape up? Well, it's definitely France, because that's the only game we have to worry about. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Good to see you. Thanks, All the best. Thank you.